Here is a problem for you. Calculate the pH of a buffer solution prepared by dissolving 65.63 grams of sodium acetate into 1 liter of 0.45 molar acetic acid solution. You are given the Ka for acetic acid which is 1.8 into 10 to the negative 5. That's the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem is what will happen to the shift in pH if or rather what will be the shift in pH if 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide is added into the solution. Assume no volume change when reactants are added to this mixture. So this is what you have to do. You have a buffer solution, determine its pH and then you're going to add some sodium hydroxide. You want to calculate the new pH and take the difference in pH between the original solution and the pH of the solution after mixing sodium hydroxide. That is what you are going to do today. As indicated in this problem, we have to recognize that this question is a buffer question because we are mixing a weak acid, in this case acetic acid, with a salt of its strong conjugate base, in this case it is sodium acetate. So recognizing the problem as a buffer question is important. Then you can apply the right equations. In order to solve this question, we need the concentration of both acetic acid, which is HC2H3O2, and sodium acetate, which is NaC2H3O2. Sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte. Therefore, it dissociates to give you 100% acetate ions and sodium ions, which means if you have the concentration of sodium acetate, you also have the concentration of acetate ions. The concentration of acetic acid is given as 0.45 moles per liter or molar. The concentration of sodium acetate is not given. We have to calculate it by determining the number of moles of sodium acetate we have and the volume of the solution, which is 1 liter. The moles can be determined by dividing the mass of sodium acetate by the molar mass which is 65.63 grams divided by 82.0343 grams per mole, which is the molar mass of sodium acetate, which gives us a new concentration for the acetate ions of sodium acetate, which is 0 .0, 0 0.80 moles per liter. And lastly, we will need the Ka value of acetic acid, which is given as 1.8 into 10 to the negative 5. We can convert this to the pKa value, which is negative log Ka or negative log 1.8 into 10 to the power of negative 5, which is 4.74. With this information, we can actually solve or determine the pH of the buffer solution using the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. The general form of the equation is written as pH is equals to pKa plus log concentration of the anion divided by the concentration of the acid. In this case, the anion is a sodium acetate or acetate ions, and the acid is acetic acid. So we are replacing the anion with acetate ion C2H3O2 minus and the formula of the acid would be HC2H3O2 and we have the numerical values for the actual concentrations. Substituting the values the equation changes to pH is equals to 4.74 which is a pKa value for acetic acid plus log concentration of acetate ions 0.800 divided by concentration of the acid, which is 0.45 moles per liter. Solving log 0 0.800 by 0.45 will give you 0 0.25. So the final pH of the solution will be 4.99. So that's for the first part of the problem. We have calculated the pH of the solution that is given to us. And now into this solution, we are going to add 0 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide. And we want to calculate the pH of this solution and calculate the difference in pH between 4.99 and whatever the new value is going to be. That's going to be called the shift in pH. And this is how we can do that. The previous equation can, now, can also be written as pH is equals to pKa plus log number of moles of base divided by number of moles of acid where the number of moles of base in this case is sodium acetate or acetate ions 
and the number of moles of acid in the previous case was acetic acid. And since we are adding sodium hydroxide, the equation can be rewritten as follows. pH is equals to pKa plus log. We need the concentration of the base in the numerator. So we have the number of moles of base that we already started with plus the number of moles of base that we added into the buffer solution. In this case, we are adding sodium hydroxide. So we will write it as plus NOH2. In the denominator, we have some acid, number of moles of acid. And if you add some base into an acid, there is going to be a neutralization reaction. Therefore, the actual number of moles of acid will be lesser by the amount of base added. So this is how we can solve the part B of the problem. Now let's substitute the values so that we can obtain the final pH. We had already calculated the concentration of the acetate ions, which is 0 0.80 moles, and we already were given the concentration of the acetic acid, which is 0.45. Into this mixture, we had added 0 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide, so the number of moles of the base went up, and the number of moles of acid decreased due to neutralization. So the final value for pH can be calculated like this. pH is equal to 4.74 plus log 0.82 divided by 0.43. Solving log 0.82 by 0.43 gives you 0.28 or the final pH is equals to 5.02. The pH for the original solution was 4.99 if you remember. Therefore, if you take the difference between them, delta pH can be found to be 0.03 which means when you added 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide into a buffer solution that had a pH of 4.99, the pH only increased by 0.03 units, which is a very small increase. On the other hand, if you dissolve 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide in water, the pH is going to increase tremendously. The pH of the solution is going to increase and it's going to be very high. So this shows that the solution that we have taken is a buffer solution. And that's how we calculate the shift in pH when you add a base. In a similar way, you can also calculate the shift in pH when a few moles of an acid is added, appropriate changes to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation can be made, and we can determine the final pH. Mind you, there are other ways to solve this problem too. So this is one of the methods we can adopt to determine the pH of a buffered solution and calculate the shift in pH. That's it for now. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe.